of us in our family and the oldest one was 11 years older than I was. So when I was four years old, he was 15. There were three older ones and three younger ones. And we grew up just two or three doors away from here. Actually, we lived in Upper Wakeham first. My parents had a house in Upper Wakeham, which became Mr. Chester Clark's house. And when Dad's father died, he moved, Dad inherited his father's house, so moved down to the house here in Lower, what we call Lower Wakeham. I, uh, I, I lived about a half mile west of here, that is going to Monarchville. And uh, we, we had to walk to uh, school when we started school, and uh, it was a mile, we, we had to walk a mile. And then when they changed and amalgamated the schools, the, the school is just down the road here a bit, and uh, I still had to walk. <laughs> oh. Yes, I still had to walk to school. And, you know, we had tough winters, but we never missed school. We, we always went. Uh, we, we did it well, of course. We didn't mind snow, cold either. When they consolidated the schools and brought the children from Upper Wakeham to Lower Wakeham, the children beyond where Dennis lived were driven to school. And my dad had the first uh, transportation of those children. And in the winter time, the roads were not plowed. So he had a team of horses and another homemade van and the children got into that van to come to school and take them home in the afternoon. My parents were from Wakeham. My dad was from Lower Wakeham and my mother was a miller from Upper Wakeham. My parents too were from uh, Wakeham. Uh, one was from Lower Wakeham and one was from Upper Wakeham. My parents <laughs> were, were Charles Palmer and Audrey Coffin. And they had uh, nine children and... Uh, you had a twin? Yes, I had a twin brother. And there was, the, well, the, I had five sisters. Can you imagine? Five sisters trying to look after them. <laughs> they were all younger than I. Oh, okay, so Where do you fit in the, in the hierarchy there? Yeah. Well, the, the, there were three boys. I had Sid and Kenny. Sidney and Kenny were older than I. And I, I, I was the last boy. And, and your twin died as well, a My twin died as a, 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 a baby. year old, I believe. With, I think it was cholera. They had no medication for that in those days. And we, uh, we enjoyed ourselves thoroughly as a, as a large family. Uh, Once they came to Lower Wakeham, it was consolidated and there was 10 grades. Before that, there was seven grades in a one-room school and one teacher. And the seats were double. There were two people in a seat. So the teacher used to put the young ones that were just starting to school with an older sister or brother or friend so that that person could help the younger person. And that's how she was able to manage seven grades. Now, do you remember, do you remember who you would have been seated with? Yeah, my sister Mona, who was five years older than me. Right, who lives but, just next door. <laughs> but then, in two years time, Mona was too old to be in the school anymore. And we had a different teacher and she put us with boys that were four and five years older than we were. And my friend and I were afraid of the boys that we were sitting. <laughs> but what could we do? We, 
we were seven or eight years old and these boys were 13 and 14 and, and we had to sit with them. Walking back and forth to school, I remember one time we were coming home from school and uh, there was a, a section of the road that was in, in it was wooded, the, the, the property wasn't cleared, it was wooded. And when we got to this wooded area, we met one of the guys that had been in school with us. Uh, it was Godfrey Miller. And he had been to town, and of course he had walked to town and back again, and he was chewing tobacco. So, <laughs> my two brothers and I how, all had to have to chew this tobacco. Now, my brothers had chewed tobacco before and they knew what to do with it. But I didn't know, and I of course swallowed the juice okay. instead of spitting it out. And I remember when we got home, uh, to, uh, I, I just couldn't eat supper. I was too sick and I, I, I know my father knew what was wrong, but <laughs> Mama didn't. She took pity on me. And, and uh, one of the things that we had for supper that night was, was one of the vegetables was cabbage. And you know, I couldn't eat cabbage for years. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I ever chewed tobacco after that either. <laughs> Unfortunately, I smoked after that, but I did never chew tobacco after. Another time I was coming, I remember coming home, I was alone and there was a, saw, a, a small sawmill there. And of course they had a track that the, the buggy ran out with the sawdust on this track and dumped the sawdust in the river, I believe it was. Anyway, I smartly had to walk this track. Uh, I woke up down in the sawdust pile, <laughs> I, I got knocked out when I hit the when I fell and hit the track. So that was another time. Well, at home, uh, of course, there was there was all of us children, and all the the younger ones, the girls were, you know, a couple of years younger than I was, and. Uh, the, all the way down the line and so there was always lots of lots to do and lots of excitement and lots to try to keep the younger ones amused and uh, we, we had a uh, lots of love we were poor but we were never cold and we were never hungry and we learned to do all kinds of things uh, I, I, you know, we split wood, we sawed wood, we carried it in, and we uh, we also had uh, animals like horses and cows. And I remember one of my brothers looked after. He was a couple of years older than I, and he he looked after one cow himself. He milked it, and I remember him making bread too. And our cattle used to we used to put them out on the marsh to in the summer, in the summer to uh, to get the feed from the marsh mm -hmm. and it was it was it was good for them the cows milk increased when they got out on that uh, yeah. that kind of feed mm -hmm. and it was probably the salt water you know in the, the, the land. and I, re I remember my parents had a property in Point in Point of Bar. They they had a they had a they called it a farm, but it was on an island. And they used to have to take they'd take their horses and swim the horses across to the island and take the mowing machine in a, a rowboat and they made hay and they had they paid a thousand dollars for the island when they bought it. And it was 50 acres. And they made hay in the fall, the summer and fall, and they hauled it home in the winter on the ice. Again, it was wonderful food for cattle, for the cows, 
but it wasn't very good for the horses. Horses like the coarser hay, like Timothy and Clover, but this was a marshy hay. I bought the island. My, my brother and I bought the island. I think we paid $600 for it. From your uncle? From my uncle. And my brother didn't had been in the Air Force. For, well, he was all, spent his life, working life in the Air Force. And you know, he worked in Vancouver after that, after he retired from the Air Force. Anyway, he didn't want to have anything to do with it for the island, so I did. I paid the taxes on it all, my, all our years. And we finally gave it to, uh, what's the name of the outfit? He worked like most of the, the our neighbors did. He he had four or five different trades. Mm -hmm. uh, he he did carpenter work. He uh, worked as a as a guide on Salmon River. He worked uh, in the woods on uh, as a as a foreman for a lumber camp. Uh, he. Pile driver. Pile driver uh, on the ice out here. Uh, so they went from one thing to another. They, they had no steady jobs, but they went from one job to another. And I remember him working at one time for the municipality uh, in the winter, or it was in the spring. Uh, they were cutting trees along the highway and they were also shoveling, I think that when the, I know when the snow, snows, when it got soft, the snows got soft, they used to have to shovel to get the horses through. And then of course there was mud. And I remember he made, he earned one dollar a day for himself and the horse. Wow. <laughs> For himself and a horse, a dollar a day. Wow. Now, can you imagine a person with nine children uh, not knowing where the next dollar was coming from? What, what kind of stress did they go through? I spent the last 20 <laughs> years of my life traveling to Murdochville to work. And that was an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So it was like a 12-hour day. And what did you do in Murdochville? I started in the purchasing department. I was uh, a buyer. Then I got to be foreman of the, their warehouse. And eventually I got to be in charge of purchasing and warehousing. Uh, I had uh, mostly French people that worked for me, some of them could not speak English, but uh, I learned French that way. That's one of the, the vocabularies that I learned, I learned other, others as well as I moved along. Tell them about working for the IP. CIP, I was Canadian International Paper. I started working there in uh, July with a crew, a camp crew, well, a camp crew that built the log cabins for the the uh, people that worked there in the winter. So we actually built five sets of camps. And the last camp we built was nearly to Murdochville, mm -hmm. and we were living in tents. And so we had a foot or so of snow. And you know, a tent is nice and warm as long as, uh, <laughs> as, long as you have some snow. <laughs> and keep a fire on, of course. Uh, now, what year, what year would that have been, roughly? What year would that have been? Roughly. That was... Uh, around 1950. No, around in the 48. 40s. 48. Yeah, in the 48. 48, and, I, uh, and then I spent a, a winter in the... I, 
I worked as uh, the clerk uh, on this building crew, and of course not much, I didn't have much work to do in that, so I spent a lot of time out with the workers who were building the camps. And then I ended up in one of the sets of camps for the winter. And I stayed there until the snow got too deep for the horses to work. And I had a cabin of my own uh, as, a, as a clerk. And uh, I used to have lots of companies. With company, with the superintendent would come once in a while. And a very radio. nice old man. And I had a radio, and the radio reception was ideal. It was perfect. There was, there was no interference. <laughs> and I, I enjoyed all this uh, music from Wheeling, West Virginia. And the scalers used to come to scale the, 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 the cutter's wood. And they, they would stay with me, and they, all, they had... Well, some of my friends were their, was their helpers, so they stayed with me, and we just about tore the camp down around the poor old scalers. I came out. I, of course, I worked in there. I, I got, I got. I, I don't think it was a hundred dollars. It was nearly a hundred dollars a month, and as we used to say, and found in food and lodging. <laughs> so when I when the camp closed, of course, I was laid off, and I came out, hung around home for a few days, and then I started looking for work. And I went to Mr. Hyman's store. You you remember the Hyman's? Uh, and he said, yes, I need clerks. And he said, uh, I will hire you. And uh, so I asked him how much to pay. And he said, well, you, you know, he said, $45 a month. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't want to be impolite, but I said I didn't find that very much and he said well you know you don't even know how to operate a scale now you know the scale is one of those bells <laughs> anyway uh, i said well I, i'll think it over but in the meantime i got a call from the international paper and they wanted me to go and work in their warehouse in town in gaspy harbor it was uh, and i i went there they, they had fired the guy that I think a guy, I fired the guy for drinking. He was, he was drinking too much. <laughs> and uh, so I worked there until we decided, Marg and I, we were married then. No. No? The year, the year we got married is the year you quit and yes. decided on the store. And we built, we built a, little, a little, had a building built and uh, had a general store.